I'm at NASA HQ today in Washington, D.C., and I'm going to speak with the astronaut who's responsible for setting up the live internet stream that's still on the International Space Station. It was just installed in January of 2010, and now he's using it to tweet to us Earthlings. We're here today for a very special event, a NASA tweet up with NASA astronaut and U.S. Army Colonel Timothy T.J. Creamer, otherwise known as Astro underscore T.J. on Twitter. Thanks, sir. Welcome all, and thanks for coming. Thanks for playing with us. And by all means, thanks for joining me through the Twitterverse and sharing with me the excitement that we were able to start uh, while we were on orbit. It was the best job I've had in the world, uh, solar system. And, and I really, really, really uh, treasure the fact that I was able to help represent our country and be there for the ground. I'm here with astronaut and Colonel T.J. Creamer. We were based on the International Space Station, mm -hmm. and we were up about 230 miles above the surface. It became apparent that we could reach out and touch a portion of the followership of, of NASA, of space, of the business, if we were able to establish um, a, a live link to the Internet. And so many, many people put together a network, and so we were able, on board, to segregate a portion of the network so it's completely safe and completely isolated and be able to load the correct software on that uh, subnet and end up touching boxes on the ground, computers on the ground, and remote control so we were able then to do lifetime tweeting and interact with the, with the population. What were the limitations that didn't allow live internet to be on the space station? Originally, when we started building Space Station Alpha, we had a lot of bandwidth available. And because of cutbacks and that kind of stuff, it, it evolved to a space station that really wasn't equipped for uh, computer communications that well. As Expedition 1 through my 22 and 23 time frame, we got some KU band satellite capabilities, which allows us to have this uh, TCP IP uh, communications. We got to a point where we had the bandwidth, we had the software capabilities, we had the, the handshake between orbit and ground, and all that put together we get lifetime. What was the process beforehand? Because you were tweeting before that. What we've done before is we would send down email notes to the ground with a tweet available that someone else could repost for folks. And so the astronauts that have been tweeting about their space experiences were really emailing the tweet to someone on the ground. In a big sense, in, in the first six to eight weeks, people go through three major steps. They go, oh, cool, you can let things float. And you go working. And then the next thing you go, I had that thing. Where did, where did it go? And you end up losing things in the first couple of weeks. So the way to get over that, you hold on to everything. You're not going to let them float away, which is not very efficient. And then you graduate to the third level of, I can let things float. And now your awareness is very good. You've got, gotten over the space fog of battle, for instance, and you know, it's drifting off, so you kind of re reset it and keep going that way. There are so many things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. How do you decide kind of what to tweet to your audience that you think they'll find interesting? That's a great question, and there's a lot that we can pull from in a limited amount of time. The thing that I did was send me your questions, and I'll answer your questions, and that was made it real easy for me. What are the most popular questions that people are asking you while you are on the space station? The very popular tweeting questions are, can you take a picture of us? You know, over, <laughs> over, I mean, as you fly over, can you shoot us? Um, also, there's, there's some technical questions. What's the food like? What's the atmosphere like? What do you do if? Um, how, how's the power generation? Uh, just trying to understand what it is like we're living. What's, where do we sleep? How do we sleep? Do we free flow? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Great. So what are you doing now that you're grounded on Earth? What is your main focus? Rehabilitation, because it takes a bit of time to get back together and be able to play competitive tennis yes. and, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, but also we're getting into the phase after the debriefs of our mission, getting into the phase of sharing the excitement we had, sharing the wonder and trying to instill the inspiration that uh, goes along with this business. Thanks to NASA for letting us come here today and learn all about their space exploration and tweeting. I'm Ellie Rountree and this has been Rockaboom Tech. <laughs>